How's it going everybody and welcome back to our enterprise practice lab. In this video I'm going to pick up where we left off in the previous video. Uh, well actually we were pretty much wrapped it up where we had the back-to-back -back VPC working and then we noticed that the uh, port channel that we connected between the two VPC domains this one was down so but it still everything still works. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on that one. But what we're going to be focusing on in this video is setting up VXLAN inside of this environment. So the end goal, once we have VXLAN all set up and working, is so that server 76, 56, 77, and 59, it's a little zoomed in for me, uh, can all talk to each other. And you'll see communications going back and forth well, uh, through VXLAN communications and how all that type of stuff goes. So I'm gonna walk you through how to set this up. This is something that I deal with on a regular basis. Uh, I have several customers that have VXLAN deployments. I am actively, I, I do both pre-sales and post-sales on VXLAN. I have a, I'm one of a few people at the um, partner, Cisco partner that I work for that is extremely well-versed in uh, a lot of different versions of uh, VXLAN deployments. So let me go over just some of the details real quick about this section because it is a, um, uh, there's a lot of details that go into how VXLAN operates. And I just want to point out that a lot of the things we're going to be configuring in this section for setting up VXLAN will correlate directly to over to SD access um, for uh, using DNA Center on the Catalyst 9K platform. And where you end up getting connectivity locked in is uh, there's a couple key differences between ACI and VXLAN, where VXLAN is the overlay encapsulation for ACI, and then how SD access works. Operationally, they're pretty much the same for, at a, at a high 100,000 foot view. We're not getting down to the, the, the itty bitty details. I'm talking 100,000 foot view. From an operations perspective from the data plane, they both use VXLAN encapsulation for the data plane operations. ACI uses BGP for control plane propagation of IPs and MACs, where VX, uh, SD access uses LISP, locator ID separation protocol, for RLOC and EID mappings. So RLOC is the endpoint, uh, is the device where the endpoint is attached, EID is the actual subnet that the endpoint is in. So the key difference, uh, key difference between the two is with ACI you're look, and BGP, you're looking at a push model where you get the information and then you're going to push it to everybody else so that everybody's database is as up to date as possible. LISP uses a pull model where you're going to pull the data when you need it and eventually you're going to age it out. So I personally think that the BGP is the better way of doing it, in my personal opinion. Uh, and then you update when things move around. You know, uh, VXLAN uses a technique known as Host Mobility Manager, HMM, to determine which VTAP owns which MAC address, which then ties into where, where you're going to point the traffic. VXLAN in its uh, infancy in its original deployment was meant for layer 2 extension over a layer 3 backbone whatever that might look like. OSPF, EIGRP, BGP, doesn't really matter. VXLAN is pretty flexible, so even though I'm gonna be using OSPF in the underlay and doing a lot of configuration to get everything working, you can use whatever protocol you want. You can use EIGRP, you can use uh, OSPF, you can use EBGP in the underlay, it doesn't matter. The, the beauty of that is that it's there. Nobody does that really. You're going to use some sort of link state routing protocol, OSPF, ISIS, or you know something like that. Uh, most cust most of my customers use, o use OSPF in the underlay, and then they use BGP over the top. And we use we do route reflection, and uh, on the, the spine is a route reflector. The leafs are route reflector clients, and then you do some configuration on the leaf switches in order to get communication to work. VXLAN is meant to be multi-tenant. There, and the reason why is because it offers the flexibility. It's it's the key 
choice in massively scalable data centers. I work with some customers that have some really big data centers and we've got VXLAN deployed. I have one customer, the probably the biggest VXLAN deployment that I work with, um, on a regular basis I'm looking at 10,000 endpoints um, that are VXLAN attached. So it's a big fabric and there's two of them actually. There's two multi, it's a multi-site design. I did not put it into play, but I uh, help maintain and operate it. So um, I deal with VXLAN on a regular basis. So what we're going to be doing is walking through getting the leafs configured and then uh, my goal is to do just the basic operations that we need to have in play on the in, get the underlay working. Once the underlay is operational, then we'll focus on the overlay and get all of that done. There's a lot of capabilities that we need to go through and get working. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into what we actually need to configure and go from there. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and let me scoot this up just a little bit and bring this down. So uh, first things first, we're gonna start on the leaf. I'm gonna work on Nexus 9K8, then I'll jump over to Nexus 9K10 uh, and then we'll get the spine configured. And then once we have everything squared away, we'll, uh, and we get the core routing, we'll get this, um, this connection up and running from here out to the core, which will be our EBGP uh, connection outbound. So on Nexus 9K8, I'm gonna log into the box. I'm gonna to go to global config and I'm gonna type in uh, feature NV overlay. And you're gonna see that there's specific uh, capabilities, application leaf engine, ALE, and stuff like that that are needed in order to work. So technically speaking, um, there's a lot of licensing that's needed in order to deploy VXLAN, but Sys uh, Nexus operates off of the performance based or sorry, honor based licensing. So you can turn it on and everything will work, but um, you really should license whatever you're working with. Feature interface uh, VLAN, feature VN segment, segment VLAN based, feature fabric forwarding, feature uh, BGP, Feature OSPF. Okay, so now that we've got all that done. As you can see, the uh, honor base system and then the LAN enterprise services package for licensing. So now that we have all that, um, I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to do show run pipe include, actually, uh, and then over here, I'm going to do um, yeah, show, show run type include feature. I'm gonna take these guys right here, dump them onto Nexus 9K10. This is gonna be our other leaf. Go back to Nexus 9K8, and I'll type in NV overlay EVPN. You need that, uh, you need that command right there in order to do EVPN and turn on the capability. So that's the first thing. So you can't really do EVPN is the actual capability of extending MAC addresses over a layer three infrastructure. So I'm gonna go over here to Nexus 9K9. I'm gonna log into him. And I'm going to basically say uh, feature BGP and feature OSPF. That I feature OSPF. They're okay. So now I'm going to go over here to uh, on Nexus 9K9. I'm going to go to interface uh, uh, show interface status. So these should be inter router interfaces. So interface ETH one slash one IP address here will be 10.8.9.9 slash 24. No shut that. And then one slash two. This will be 9.10.9. No shut, 
interface loopback zero, IP address here will be uh, 10.0.0.0.9 slash 32. There's that. I'm gonna go over here to Nexus 9K8, interface ETH one slash one, IP address here will be 10.8.9.8 slash 24, no shut, interface loopback zero, IP address here 10.0.0.8 slash 32. And then Nexus 9K10, wait a minute here for the, uh, that last bit, NV overlay EVPN. Because if you type in EVPN, uh, until you type in NV overlay EVPN, you won't get the ability of configuring EVPN. So we type in NV overlay EVPN, and then you type in EVPN again, and now you have the ability of actually configure creating EVPN and so if you go underneath here, now you'd be able to, to do a VNI and all that type of stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, interface ETH one slash one. I'm gonna do the IP address here will be 10.9.10.10 slash 24, no shut. Interface loopback zero, IP address of 10.0.0.10 slash 32. Okay, now that we have that in play, I'm gonna go ahead and on uh, Nexus 9, or actually on this one, I can just go ahead and type it in. Router OSPF one. I'm gonna type in router ID is gonna be 10.0.0.10. Um, .0 I'm going to say that um, I, I can exit out of there now and then go underneath interface ETH one slash one and type in IP router OSPF one area zero, interface loopback zero, same thing. So then I'm gonna go over here to Nexus 9K9 and I'm uh, actually router OSPF one. I'm gonna say log adjacency changes and then a logging con seven. So we can see things when they come up. So I'm gonna go over here to 9K9, I'll say logging con seven, a router OSPF one. Router ID is going to be 10.0.0.9, and then I'm going to type in log adjacency changes. Uh, interface ETH 1 slash 1 through 2, IP router OSPF 1 area 0, and the interface loopback 0. And uh, IP router there, just like that. So we'll see the adjacency changes come online and then at Nexus 9K8, we're gonna do router, or uh, logging con seven, logging con seven, and then um, router, it, yeah, router OSPF one, router ID is gonna be 10.0.0.8, log adjacency changes, and then we're gonna type in interface ETH one slash one, IP router OSPF, one area zero. And then interface loopback zero, there's that. So after a moment or two, we should see an adjacency to Nexus 9K9 come online. There we go. And if I do a show IP OSPF interface brief, I can see the adjacency, show IP OSPF neighbor. I have an adjacency, show IP route, and I can see via OSPF that I have, if I do OSPF, I can see the loopback addresses of the remote devices, which is what I need. So this is the underlay routing protocol. So I just set up the IGP to do, to get the underlay connectivity between all three of the devices. Now I'm gonna go over here to Nexus 9K9, show IP OSPF neighbors. I have two adjacencies. Now I'm gonna type in router BGP, in this case here it's gonna be 65,002. And there's a few things that I have to do when I first jump in here. I type in address family, IPv4 unicast. I have to do address family, L2 VPN, eVPN. Uh, that's right, I have to do um, feature NV overlay. Even though I'm not planning on configuring 
uh, and then NV overlay EVPN. Router BGP 65002, address family, L2VPN, EVPN. Now I'll be able to do it. So that, now that that's there, I'll type in router ID is going to be 10.0.0.9. And then I'm going to go ahead, and, um, I believe, log neighbor changes. So if I want to see BGP come online, I like to do that just so I can see when things are coming online. So the first thing I'm going to do is I can create an, um, a template. So I can templatize my config if I want to, or I can just convert, create individual config. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in neighbor of 10.0.0.8, remote AS of 65002, update source is going to be loopback zero, and I want to form an L2 VPN, eVPN peering with it. So in this case here, it's going to be address family, L2 VPN, eVPN, and that's all I have to do. That, and then I'll type in route reflector client so that any routes that I learn it will be reflected downstream to wherever they got to go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit the up arrow a couple times. And this one's going to be 10, 65,002, update source loopback zero, address family, L2 VPN, eVPN, and then route reflector client. That's all I have to do. Show run BGP. That's the extent of my config. I can save my config at this point. So now I'm going to go over to Nexus 9K8. So I've been router BGP 65002. I'm going to type in uh, router ID of 10.0.0.8 and then log neighbor changes. Neighbor of 10.0.0.9 remote AS 65002. Update source loopback zero. Address family L2VPN eVPN. And that's it. Now that I've got that there, momentarily I should have a BGP peering to that connection. Show run BGP. Let me go ahead and open up a new notepad doc real quick, just so that I can get this configuration right here. And then I'm just gonna change the, the peering. Jump over to 10 and copy and paste that in. Give that a second to apply. And then momentarily here, we should have a connection up and running. There we go. So now we go back to here and I do a show BGP, L2 VPN, eVPN summary. I have my peerings, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So essentially what we have right here is we've got the first four steps are done. That was the underlay and the BGP overlay. BGP, the overlay control plane has been built. Now the next thing would be to create the VN segments and get that all squared away. So what that means is the VN segments, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have two VLANs. I'm gonna have VLAN 100 and VLAN 101. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in VLAN 100. Name is gonna be VLAN 100. I have to give it a VN segment. And the VN segment is going to be its part of its BGP extended community value to identify who it is in the network. So in this case here, I'm gonna use 10, uh, 1000 and then 100. And I'm gonna come up here, VLAN 101, name 101, and then come back to the, this guy. Now what you're seeing with this double wide ARP ether TCAM carving, this essentially allows you to have more space in the TCAM for the added overhead of VXLAN encapsulation. That's a basic way of explaining it. Now, the other thing too, when you deal with VXLAN on a large scale is you, every one of your SVIs that is going to be used for layer three communication inside of a segment or between segments, and uh, you're gonna end up having the same MAC address because there needs to be a consistent MAC address across all of your leaf switches, because think of every leaf switch that you deploy as part of one big switch, is how that would work. So you're gonna type in fabric forwarding mode, fabric forwarding any cast gateway MAC is gonna be 001.0001.0001. And then when you create your SPIs, you're going to map 
this MAC address to the SVI itself. And I'm going to type in VRF context is going to be enterprise. Enterprise. Like that. And I'm going to type in address. And then underneath here, I'm going to say that the VNI for this guy here is going to be the same VNI for layer 3, which is going to be 10,033. So VNI, and it's going to be 10,033. And then address family, IPv4 unicast. Underneath here. And you're going to type in route target, in this case here, both auto and eVPN. So you can do both IPv4 and eVPN. This allows you to uh, exchange eVPN routes inside of IPv4 unicast. And then now that that's done, I'm going to be able to type in uh, RD is going to be auto. RD auto means it's going to take if we do a show run VRF enterprise, it's going to take this value here and the BGP ASN, and that's going to be your extended community value. So 10,033 and 65,002. Now that I've got that done, I can go ahead to the next stage and I'm going to go ahead and create VLAN 33. Name is going to be L3 underscore VNI. VN segment is going to be 10,033, exit out, there we go. And then I'm going to say EVPN and hit the enter key and then I'm gonna come in here and say VNI, uh, in this case here for 10,000, uh, was it 1 million? Yeah, 100 and then you're gonna say layer two and then you're gonna type in RD auto and then route 10,033. Both auto and hit the enter key. There is no EVPN at this point because you've already configured that underneath the VRF. I'm going to exit out and hit the up arrow. So this is going to be this one, layer two, RD auto, or our target both auto. So show run pipe section EVPN. So we have that one configured as well. Exit out here. I'm going to go to, I'm going to create my SPIs. So the SPIs. Interface VLAN 100. I'm going to type in VRF member enterprise. I'm going to type in IP address here is going to be 10. Dot, I'm sorry, uh, 172.16.100.1 slash 24. Actually, I'm going to and then tag it with, uh, I'll tag it with 65002. Now, the tag that I'm putting right here will. Um, I, this is what I do across all my customers when I deploy, is I can create a route map that matches on this tag value, and then I can redistribute this into BGP versus having hundreds and hundreds of potential network statements. I'm going to type in here fabric or uh, fabric forwarding any a mode is going to be any cast gateway. So it's going to take this MAC address that we created just a little bit ago, and it's going to apply that as the MAC address. I'm going to say no shut, show IP interface brief, VRF enterprise, show run interface VLAN 100. Make sure I didn't miss anything. That looks right. There we go. So I'm going to hit the up arrow a couple times, go underneath uh, VLAN 101. Uh, we're going to do the 101 here and the fabric forty mode just like that and then no shut it obviously show IP interface brief VRF enterprise there we are I'm gonna go ahead and say interface VLAN 33 I'm gonna type in VRF member enterprise I'm gonna say uh, no shut I'm gonna type in IP forward this will allow us to take that shared VNI, which is going to be VLAN 33, that's going to allow us to do routing in between all of our uh, VN segments, as well as provide the connectivity we need for the outside world. So if you don't put this command in here, you won't be able to route in between your, your segments. So if I show IP interface brief, VRF enterprise, now I have my IP forward enabled, that's going to be your shared VNI to allow symmetric IRB or symmetric integrated routing and bridging. 
So now that I've got that in play, I'm good to go there. So now I need to go to interface uh, eth one slash three and type in switch port, switch port mode of access, switch port access VLAN 100. And spanning tree port type edge and show interface status. I might have to no shut the port. That's true, I do. So three and four, so I'm gonna no shut it. There it is. So now we're good to go there, and then four is the same thing. Switch port, switch port mode access, uh, switch port access VLAN 101, spanning tree port type edge, no shut. Show interface status, there it is. Okay, so now I have all of my configuration in place on that switch, so now I should be able to do um, then, then the next step is to go and create the NVE interface because that's the one thing we haven't done yet. So then we're going to have to go ahead and type in interface NVE1. I'm going to type in uh, source interface is going to be loopback0. We're going to type in member VNI100. We're going to type in an ingress replication protocol. Actually, I take that back one step. Host reachability protocol is going to be BGP. Then member VNI. And we're going to type in host reachability protocol is going to be. Uh, sorry, no, it's um, ingress replication protocol BGP. And hit the enter key. And then we're going to do the same thing for this guy. Here, exit out, we're going to type in um, member associate BRF. Uh, member VNI associate BRF. And then we're going to exit out of that. And we're going to show run interface NVE1. There we go. So you're so I always try to shorten up my my layer three VNI mapping to it just so that it shows up at the top. And I'm going to type in no shut. We're going to be using ingress replication ingress replication protocol BGP. So we're going to be using basically unicast propagation instead of relying on multicast because I don't have PIM enabled or multicast groups uh, squared away. So now we have the uh, NVE interfaces up. So if I do a show NVE interface, uh, NVE1, right now it's uh, squared away. We're looking pretty good. We're not doing anything fancy with it. So now if I go to, let me go ahead and do a show run. And I'm gonna basically take all this config and I'm going to copy it into Notepad and make some adjustments to it. So let me go ahead to the top here just so that I don't have to retype all that. All this stuff right here. So I'm gonna just grab all this config right here down to the bottom, paste it in, and let me just get rid of some of these configs. I don't need all these interfaces here. Get that out of the way, and then we're going to say this will be 10. Actually, let me go ahead and get rid of the OSPF config and the BGP. Um, so there's one, a couple, one other step actually on Nexus 9KA that I forgot. So we're going to type in router BGP 65002. Type in VRF Enterprise. I'm going to come underneath here and type in address family IPv4 unicast. Uh, I have to do one other thing before I do that. Route map, which is going to be BGP direct, say match tag 65002. And then router BGP 65002, 
BRF Enterprise, Address Family, IPv4 Unicast, and then we're going to type in redistribute direct route map BGP direct. So uh, show run BGP. So I'm going to take this command right here and I'm going to get rid of all the existing config because that's not needed. I'm just going to grab the VRF config. That's and then we'll go ahead and get rid of uh, OSPF isn't needed either. I'm going to get rid of this line, get rid of the VTY line. This stuff isn't necessary. I don't need to configure this. These interfaces are correct. Get rid of this. That's not needed. Uh, that's needed. That's needed. That's needed. Go the other direction, eVPN. Okay, cool. So I should be able to take all that into Nexus 9K10 and populate it all. It's going to take a couple of minutes for that to apply. And then once it does, we should be in pretty good shape. While that's working, I'm going to go to 56 and the servers. Where's 56? Oh, there are, you know what? I didn't move them over yet. That's my fault. So 56. Oh yeah, I did right here. So host name is going to be uh, SRV56. No IP routing. Uh, IP default gateway will be um, 172.16.100.1. Interface gig 0 slash 0. IP address here is going to be 172.16.100.56 slash 24. And MAC address here will be um, 0000.0100.0056. No shut. And do right. So 56 is there. I'm going to do 59 real quick. Get that one knocked down. Host name is going to be SRB59. Uh, no IP routing. IP default gateway will be 172.16.101.1. Interface gig 0 slash 0. IP address is going to be 172.16.101.59 uh, slash 24 mask. And then we'll type in MAC address is going to be 000.0001.0059. And no shut do write that. I'm doing that so it's going to be VLAN 101 and MAC address 59 so it'll be really really easy to tell in the configuration what's going on. And then we got 76 and 77. So this guy gets over here. 61 somehow keeps getting bumped around. Um, so 76 go ahead and say host name is going to be SRB 76 uh, no IP routing. And then we're going to do uh, IP default gateway of 172.30, or I'm sorry, 16.101.1. Um, interface gig 0 slash 0. IP address of 172.16.101.76 slash 24. MAC address table or MAC address is going to be 000.0101.0076. No shut. Do right. And then 77 will be same thing. Uh, this will be uh, VLAN 100. So we're going to type in host name is SRB77. No IP routing. IP default gateway of 172.16.100.1. Interface gig 0 slash 0. 
IP address 172.16.100.77 slash 24 mask MAC address table 0100.0077 no shut do right okay now I've got all my devices configured now I get to go back over to my Nexus switches and see if everything I've done is correct. So let's go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to go to. Wait, what? There. Okay. So what I want to do, quit highlighting. And do a show Mac address table dynamic. So I've learned some things in dynamically from those two guys. And if I do a show BGP, L2VP, and EVPN summary, I'm not learning anything yet. But I am learning stuff um, in from the devices that are here, which is what I want to see, which is good. If I go to Nexus 9K10, I'm not learning any routes. So show BGP, L2 VPN, EVPN. Oh, you know, uh, L2 VPN, EVPN. Okay. Let's see here. Show MAC address table dynamic. Those are coming in okay. Okay, so I have a sneaking suspicion. Normally I don't have to set up this from the ground up, so I think it might be a, let's do a uh, show BGP IPv4 Show BGP VRF Enterprise IPv4 Unicast Summary. That's it. Okay. I need to enable IPv4 Unicast. I forgot about that. Um, so we're going to go over here to Show Run BGP. And we're going to go underneath this guy here. And we're going to type in Address Family IPv4 Unicast. And then we're going to say... Um, Software configuration inbound always, so we can see what routes we're learning. Okay, so it's going to keep telling me that that's okay, that's okay though. So same thing on 10, show run BGP. Config T, I'm going to go to here. Address family IPv4 unicast. And software configuration inbound always, so we can see what's going on back and forth. And on Nexus 9K10, show run BGP global config we're going to go to here address family IPv4 unicast route reflector client um, software configuration inbound always so we can see what routes we're learning back and forth and the same thing with this guy address family IPv4 unicast uh, route reflector client software configuration inbound always uh, we're going to show run BGP, just make sure I haven't missed anything. Out reflector client. Okay, cool. So now if I go back to here, and I do a show, show MAC address table dynamic. Um, did I not enable those interfaces? Show interface status. Connected. Okay, cool. So... We're going to have to generate a little bit of traffic in order for this to work. And if I do a show BGP, LTVP, and EVPN summary, nothing's being propagated yet, which is expected. So, and if I come over here and do the same thing and do a uh, show BGP, I, uh, IPv4 unit, show BGP, LTVP, and EVPN summary, nothing's being propagated. So let me go over to here. 56.
me go ahead and ping 172.16.100.1. I should be able to ping it, and I can. Can I ping 100.1, 101.1? Can I ping 176? Show IP interface brief. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that should still work. Not 100, 101, 101.76. There, so I know I have reachability there. Let me go ahead and ping, uh, is it 59, 59. Let's see if I can ping across. Okay, so I'm gonna use, so there's a connectivity issue between the two that I have to get sorted out. So let me bring 56 over a little closer to where I'm working. Uh, just so that it's in the same area that I'm working in. So I don't have to keep jumping back and forth. Okay, so I've got 56 here, so let's look at Nexus 9K8. So I can see that they're being learned dynamically. Show BGP, L2 VPN, eVPN summary. I have routes being learned that way and connectivity to where I've got to go. But the forwarding isn't working at the moment, which it should be. So in these route, these route type two are going to be, there's going to be an entry for it. This is the layer two route right here. And then I have a, so this is basically be your MAC address table being populated. Then you have your ARP entry mapping a MAC address to an IP address. And then you have your, this is who you're, you're learning traffic from. So I'm not seeing dot 10 in here, which tells me that there's communication issues somewhere. So let me go ahead and take a look at, and I'm not learning any routes. So let me see what the heck is going on here because I should be learning something. Show run, what am I missing? All that looks right. Let's see, I need a cast. Our targets are there. Okay, so let's do a, see what's happening here. This is spy and see it. So we're gonna do a debug, BGP, updates. And we're gonna do a clear BGP, L2 VPN, eVPN, star soft, and see what we, see what we see. Okay, so you can see a bunch of stuff coming through. 59, so he's receiving the routes. Here's 59. Seventy-six. Seventy-seven. Uh, let's see, 56. So if I come back over here and do a summary, but I'm not learning any routes. Why am I not learning any routes? 
show BGP IPv4 unicast summary. And I'm not learning anything. The spine is not doing, it's not learning any routes. Dropping prefix. Why is it drop due to attribute policy reject? It's a route reflector. So why am I why am I reject why am I rejecting the route? Let's do a debug BGP updates, and then we're gonna do a, a clear BGP L2 VPN eVPN. So um. Star soft. Okay, I don't see anything not installed in hardware let's see Let me pause while I'm investigating the problem and see what the actual issue is. Okay, after a little bit of uh, digging, I did remember what the uh, specific details that I missed were. So, traditionally speaking, when you're doing something like MPLS VPN on iOS routers or iOS XR routers, uh, stuff like that, um, as soon as you enable the VPN address family, the, uh, the send community both, so for standard and extended community values, is automatically added to the configuration. It is not in Nexus. So um, what ends up happening is you need to, and as you can see, the routes are starting to come through. What ends up happening is if you don't enable the, the communities to be, extend, to be sent, um, what ends up happening is they're not. So the route target values, the route distinguishers, all that type of stuff isn't sent, so you don't learn anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a terminal width of 150 here, and this is the NVE peers output. So this was what I was, uh, you should always check this to make sure that you actually have an actual VTEP peering to the remote router. And if you do, that's great. And as you can see here, all these update messages is basically telling me that now it's going to install the routes. So if we come back over here, let me go ahead and get out of the way. If I do a show BGP, L2 VPN, eVPN summary, I'm learning four routes now. If I come back here, I'm gonna be learning a bunch of additional stuff. So I'm gonna be learning, let me go ahead and bring this over here so you guys can see the topology. I'm gonna to be learning a bunch of, I have my layer three VNIs right here. That's being learned as you would expect it to be. So I'm also learning 10176 and 156, right? So what I'm gonna go do now is on server 56, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to attempt to ping uh, 172.16.100.59. That should respond now, hopefully. Unless it's, you know what, take that back, sorry, it's 101. I believe. Let me just double check on my, we pull 59 over here real quick. Fifty nine is way over here. So bring 59 way back over here. I draw back to having such a large topology. Just keeping everything in check. 
So let's do show IP interface brief 101. That's what I thought. So if I was to ping 172.16.101.1. Okay, let me check on Nexus 9K10 to make sure I turned everything on. So we're gonna do a show IP interface brief VRF enterprise. Well, everything's enabled. So show interface status, connected, do I have the right VLANs on the right ports? E nope, I don't. That's the problem. I need to put 59 is Ethernet 1 slash 3, and that's on 100. That would be the, that's the problem. So interface ETH 1 slash 3, switch port access VLAN 101, interface, um, interface ETH 1 slash 4, switch port access VLAN 100. Show interface status again. Okay, now that they're flipped around, 56 should be able to talk to 50, 59 pretty easily. And we're gonna, yep, and then I can ping my gateway. That explains why it wasn't working. And then from 56, I should be able to ping 177. And I can. So now if I go back to Nexus 9K8, we see these additional MAC addresses coming through. And if I do a L2 VPN, eVPN, I can see they're showing up now. Here's 59 and 77. And go there. Okay, perfect. We're learning what we need to learn and where we need to learn it. So that's that's pretty much what we need to have configuration-wise in order for the propagation to happen the way we need it to. So if I was to do a show IP route, VRF enterprise, I'm going to see some traffic. So what I want to verify here right now is anything that's directly attached to the switch. In this case here, I'm Nexus 9K8. I'm right here. I have 56 and I have 76. So I should see um, 156. And I see 10176. And you'll notice that attached to both of those is HMM. HMM is Host Mobility Manager. And uh, just like that. And then I see 177 and 10159. And both of those are VXLAN encapsulated. So I've got a VXLAN tunnel set up between these two switches and I'm learning traffic back and forth over that, v over that VXLAN connection. And that is the key thing in order for this to work the way you want it to. So at this point in time, I've got all the connectivity squared away the way I need it to. The next stage in the process for us um, would be to go through and uh, Nexus 9K8 and Nexus 9K10 form VRF aware eBGP peerings to CSR13 and CSR14. They would learn those routes via IPv4 unicast and then be able to reach these servers directly. So it's pretty cool what you can do with it and that's really the capability that comes into play overall when you get down to the weeds of how VXLAN works. Um, so at this point in time, we are done with setting up VXLAN in the data center. Everything is working the way we expect it to. So um, very rare that I ever run into problems like that. And it's one of those things where I'm not usually setting it up on the fly. I am usually doing something like exactly like this, where I put a handful of devices into a lab and I build it out first, get all the configurations in place that I need, and then I basically save it as a, as a working configuration. I send it to the customer or I will have it up for reference when I'm deploying. Because as you can tell from this, one second here, as you can tell from this, there's a lot of moving parts to VXLAN. You know, setting up all the features. I, I did forget the, uh, the community values. So that's something I'll have to update this uh, workbook or the, the lab guide with but at the end of the day as you can see once you get everything dialed in it does just ma magically work so that's really the important part here so we, and I won't be forgetting that because what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to take the config so what's cool is once you get it running 
in one location, all you've really got to do is take a working configuration and then massage it a little bit and deploy it in another pair of switches. Boom, you're up and running. Now, there is some minor complications to this that are not involved here. A lot of the customers I work with, they have VPCs deployed and they're running v, uh, any uh, VXLAN on, on those v, uh, VPCs. And when you do that, that changes the way that VXLAN operates and it converts it to an AnyCast VTAP operation. So it's equal cost multipath out both devices. So it makes things a little bit more complicated. I do intend on covering some of the more advanced capabilities and how that works in some upcoming training. But for right now, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Now that I have the ability of scaling VXLAN beyond six or seven devices, um, you know, in this type of a topology, it gives me a lot of latitude in what I can do. So when I'm, what am I sitting at? I think like 25% CPU. No, 20% uh, CPU, 26% memory. So with 65 devices running, that's pretty good. It's going to jump up to probably, if I had to say 25% CPU and 30% memory, once I get the remaining um, devices online. And once that's done, it'll be a smooth sailing. The routing is going to take us a little bit to get through, but uh, it'll the network will fully converge over the next, I think, eight to ten videos as we get through and get the routing up and running everywhere we want it to go. It will be in good shape. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please leave those in the comment section below, and I will catch all of you in the next video. Have a good one, guys.